Hello, I am Richard Elger, Chairperson of the Law Day Committee. The following mock trial is to help educate you about criminal justice. Although lighthearted, it demonstrates important legal principles of our society. It was made possible through the cooperation of the Law Day Committee, SASA, SETV, and the Saginaw Public Schools. I hope you will enjoy this presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Doris Nabisco, reporting to you from the Tenth Circuit Court in Saginaw County, Michigan. Now that the Michigan Supreme Court allows TV cameras into the courtroom, we are able to bring you gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of the trials as they occur. The American court has always been open to public hearing. The Constitution of the United States protects us all from secret hearing. I'm sure you all remember reading in the newspaper accounts about the tragic story of Jack and the Beanstalk, which resulted in the death of Joseph Giant. The trial is underway. All the jurors have been selected except one. The court is about to reconvene to complete the jury selection. Your attention please. All rise. The Tenth Circuit Court of the State of Michigan is now in session. The Honorable Justine Mercy, Circuit Judge, now presiding. All persons having business before the court may now approach the bench. Please maintain a respectful silence and be seated. The State of Michigan against Jack Person, Deck number 89093. The case of the people of the State of Michigan versus Jack Person is now ready to proceed. Is the prosecution ready? Will the attorneys identify themselves for the record? My name is Alice Catraz, Assistant Prosecuting Attorney for the County of Saginaw. My name is Ida Defense, representing the defense of Jack Porson. Does the prosecutor have any challenge of the jurors? No, Your Honor. The people are satisfied with the selection. And for the defense? We would like to thank juror number three and ask that she be excused because she went to school with one of the witnesses and might be influenced by that. Thank you, juror number three. You may be excused. Please select a replacement from the names remaining in the jury panel box. Beverly Boots, please step forward. You are now juror number three. Please take this seat. Ms. Boots, do you know of any reason why you cannot sit fairly and impartially in hearing this case? No, Your Honor. You've heard all the questions asked of the other jurors. Do you have any different answers? I was once robbed and had to testify in that case. Any question of this juror by the prosecutor? No, Your Honor. Any questions from the defense? Yes, Your Honor. Would your having been robbed be something that you could set aside so as not to influence your decision in this case? Yes. Would you believe a police officer any more than any other witnesses because of the robbery? No. I would hear all witnesses and evaluate their testimony. No further questions, Your Honor. Any further challenges of any juror? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. We have a jury. The clerk will administer the oath. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please rise. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to justly try this case and enter a true verdict based only on the evidence? I, I do. do. You may be seated. Does the prosecution have an opening statement? Yes, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we intend to prove that Jack Borson is guilty of murder in the second degree and three counts of larceny, as the charges indicate. I intend to prove that Jack clearly cut down the beanstalk in an attempt to kill Joe Giant. He took three valuable objects that were not rightfully his. Upon the first entry to the home, a bag of gold coins was taken. Upon the second entry, a hen that laid golden eggs mysteriously disappeared. I intend to prove that the hen disappeared simultaneously just as Jack was exiting the residence. On the last occasion, Mrs. Giant heard the dear golden harp sing out for help just as Jack was leaving the home. Does the defense wish to make an opening statement? Yes, the defense would like to make an opening statement. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in this case, I shall prove that the charges of murder and larceny against Jack are untrue. Jack intended to retrieve what rightfully belonged to his father before Joseph Giant stole them. The charge of murder is clearly untrue because of the fact that Joseph Giant ate humans and was much larger than Jack. 
that it leaves only the fact that Jack was using good, sound judgment to pursue his actions of self-defense. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Will the prosecution call her first witness? I call Shelly Sheriff to the stand. Prosecutor Alice Katrath calls expert witness Shelly Sheriff to the stand. Shelly Sheriff found some important pieces of evidence, including the axe and shovel used by Jack Porson. I do. Detective, did you conduct an investigation of Jack Porson's yard? Yes, I did. What did the investigation disclose? A very, very large body buried under four feet of freshly dug dirt. We also found a shovel two feet away. The shovel did belong to the Porson family. Your Honor, we would like to submit as Exhibit A the shovel used to bury the giant. Detective, did you also find the item used to chop down the beanstalk? There was an axe with plenty of bean juice sticking to it. Was there anything else unusual about that axe? The initials JP were etched into the axe. Since they matched the defendant's initials, we looked for fingerprints. Did you discover any? Yes, we found fingerprints that matched those of Jack Parsons. After examining the axe, did you find any further evidence relating to the case? A very large beanstalk with huge pods. It was much larger than anything I've ever seen. We would like to submit as Exhibit B, the axe that was found with Jack's fingerprints. That's all I wish to ask of Miss Sheriff. Riveting testimony from Shelly Sheriff. Does the defense wish to cross-examine the witness? No, Your Honor. Please call your next witness, Ms. Katras. I wish to call Dr. Hart to the stand. Up next, Prosecutor Katras calls world-renowned coroner Dr. Hart to the stand. The doctor examined the body of Joe Giant. I do. Dr. Hart, when you examined the body of Joe Giant, were you able to determine the cause of death? Well, there were severe injuries to the head and spine that definitely caused death. What possibly could have caused those injuries? It was obvious from the many broken bones and the position of the huge bruise that a terrible fall caused his death. There was also evidence of huge chunks of beanstalk embedded in the flesh. No further questions, Your Honor. Does the defense wish to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. Dr. Hart, are you 100% sure that the cause of death was due to this fall? There's no doubt in my mind, but medical science is not perfect. I was not there, but that is my professional opinion. No further questions, Your Honor. You may Dr. Down. Hart finishes her testimony. I call Ms. Golda Harp to the stand. Up next to the witness stand is the beautiful sounding Ms. Golda Harp. Jack stole Ms. Harp Please from Joe Giant, allegedly. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Ms. Harp? Since you have the unusual capacity to sing in our language and you observed all that occurred, can you tell us what happened on February 29th? After I sang the giant to sleep, I sat in the closet not making a peep. Then a boy crept out of his hiding place and he took me and my carrying case. He started to climb down a big beam plant and I sang real loud, I sang, you can't. I sang, master, master, he's taking me away. And then the boy chopped chopped and chopped away. Is that boy present in the courtroom today? Yes, that boy with the hat. He's sitting at the defense desk. No further questions, Your Honor. Does the defense wish to cross-examine the witness? No, Your Honor. You may step down. Please call your next witness. I call to the stand Ms. Jem Stone, the world-famous gemologist. Ms. Jem Stone has been called to the stand. She will give testimony about the gold coins found in the Porson home. The whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Miss Stone, you examined two coins that were found in the Porson home. The family was known to be extremely poor. Did you find that the quality of those coins was extremely valuable? Indeed. With the price of gold at $350 per ounce presently, I would say that each coin is valued at $1,000. No further questions. I call Josephine Giant to the stand. Calling Miss Giant to the stand may persuade the jury to convict Jack Porson. Let's listen to her testimony. Mrs. Giant. I know that this is a trying period for you, but do you recognize the boy that you had enter your home on those three different occasions in this courtroom? 
That boy, Jack Porson, was the boy that came to the house. Please explain to the court what occurred on the three different times when Jack Porson entered your home. Well, the first time I saw that young hoodlum. Hey, lady! Objection to the term hoodlum! Objection sustained. Jack is presumed innocent. The jury would disregard that statement. Go on, Mrs. Giant. Well, the first time that I let Jack into our house, he was very tired. However, he soon snuck out after my husband went to sleep. It seemed that soon afterwards we were missing a, very, a bag of very valuable coins. This made me quite suspicious. Why did you say that you thought Jack was associated with the missing coins? Well, there's never anyone in our area, as we are very difficult to reach. We live at a high altitude in the clouds. Please tell us of the other times Jack came to the castle. On the second occasion that Jack begged in our home, we later missed our hand that lays golden eggs. On the last occasion, we actually heard our dear golden harp scream out for help for, uh, from us. Then we witnessed Jack struggling with golden in his arms down the bee stalk. It was minutes later that my dear husband went chasing after Jack. That must have been a terrible crash when poor Joe went to his death. <laughs> In other words, you know for a fact that Golda Harp was definitely taken by Jack? Mm. And you claim that no one else possibly could have been around when the other valuables were taken? Most definitely. I'm positive of it. No further questions, Your Honor. Any questions from the defense? Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Giant, is it at all possible that someone else other than Jack could have been on the castle grounds at the same time of the theft? Well, yes, our yard is very large, and I suppose it is possible, although it's highly unlikely because we are so hard to reach. Our castle is so high in the clouds that people passing on the rolling clouds can barely reach us, but I suppose it is possible. Don't the harp case, the coin bag, and the hen's nest all have the same initials on them? Yes, JP. Were people frightened of your husband because of his size and strength? Yes, sometimes they were. Were they frightened because he ate humans? That's not true. No one's ever proven that. These are all the questions I have for you, Mrs. Giant. Thank you. A very emotional and dramatic testimony from Josephine Giant. The defense will have their work cut out for them. Up next, Mr. Merlin. The magical beans may have come from this mysterious magician. The police file states that at 1.40 p.m. you reported your beans being stolen. Is this true? Yes, it is. Did you chase after Mr. Beans, the supposed thief? Yes, of course I did because those were magical beans and they had special powers. When you caught up with Mr. Beans, what did you do? I said, bop, doop, scoopity, wop, bop, bop. Oh, that makes me feel young again. And I turned him into a frog. Is there any way to reverse the effects? Yes, he has to be kissed on the lips by a beautiful princess. When you found out that Mr. Beans did not have the beans, how did you feel? Well, I was very angry because I had no clue what the beans could do. They have uncontrollable magical powers. If you knew the beans were in Jack's possession, would you have stopped the disaster? Yes, I would have. No further questions, Your Honor. Any questions from the prosecution? No, Your Honor. Defense, please call your next witness. I call to the stand Mr. Rob R. Beans. Mr. Rob R. Beans, now a frog is being called to the stand. Mr. Merlin, as you've heard, turned him into a half-man, half-frog creature. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Right. Mr. Beans, do you know Jack Porson? The boy he traded the beans to? Of course I do. Where did you get these beans from originally? From the magician named Merlin. He was an interesting character until he did this to me. I mean, I'm a frog. Did you steal the beans from Merlin? Objection, Your Honor. Mr. Beans' answer to that question could be admitting a crime. The Fifth Amendment to the Constitution says he cannot be forced to do that. Objection sustained. Your appearance is rather startling. Tell me how you became a frog. Well, I noticed Merlin was chasing me, and so I gave the beans away to the first person I could find for a cow named Milky Way. Too bad I was that nitwit Jack. Hey, frog boy! Objecting to the term nitwit, Your Honor, I ask the term nitwit be stricken from the court record. Objection sustained. Mr. Beans, watch your language. Mr. Beans, did you know that the beans were magical? Well, I had some idea. Besides, Merlin was chasing me, and 
Before I knew, he shouted something at me and I was hopping and eating flies. No further questions, Your Honor. Any questions from the prosecution? No, Your Honor. You may step down. The defense may proceed with the next witness. Call the stand, Jack Forsman. Always a risky move, putting the defendant on the witness stand. Let's hope Jack Porson can persuade the jury with his testimony. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Jack, tell the court where you were on February 29th. Here and there. Jack, at home, all right? Is it true that your mother told you to sell the family cow, Milky White? Yeah, she told me to sell it for a good price because we were so poor. On the way to the market, I met Mr. Beans, who offered to trade my cow for some magic beans. I took them because I hope our luck might change. Go on, explain the whole story. Now here's a little story that I got to tell about me and the cow and some beans as well. Halfway to the market, I met a man who took our cow and gave me beans in a can. My mom didn't think the deal was a winner, so I went to bed without any dinner. To show her reaction, she threw him out the door. Up until morning, I didn't see him anymore. When I woke up, I was amazed to see that the beans had grown higher than the highest tree. What did you do then? I went outside to get a look. The beans looked almost too large to cook. Instead, there was this beanstalk standing in front of me. I got so freaked, I would almost run away. But I thought I'd go climbing instead. Then I'd be higher than the highest tree. What did you see at the top of the beanstalk? A huge castle above the clouds. A lady dragged me into her house, and I felt as tiny as a mouse. The place started shaking as I finished baking. And I ran like heck. I came down the beanstalk, a nervous wreck. Did you take anything from the castle? Uh, yeah, but they were just my dad's old treasures. And Josephine over there told me about her husband. He's a giant, he's little kids like me. Oh no, he didn't! Objection, Your Honor, we aren't putting the deceased on trial. Objection overruled. He is allowed to testify his own state of mind. Tell us the rest, Jack. Well, the last time I went down the beanstalk, I saw the giant on my heels. Man, I was scared silly. I asked my mom to get the axe out, and I chopped down the beanstalk. I didn't mean to hurt him. Then why did you bury him in your yard? I was so scared that I didn't know what to do. I knew I didn't mean to harm him, but I was told by his wife he eats people. I only chopped down the beanstalk to defend myself. I see. That's all, Your Honor. Are there any further questions? Yes, I would like to question the witness, Your Honor. Jack, did you then chop down the beanstalk deliberately? Yeah, I did. So you knew that the giant was on the beanstalk when you fled? You betcha. You knew that the giant was on the beanstalk and you fully intended to do bodily harm to him? Yeah, I did. Jack, I say again, did you see the giant on the beanstalk? Yes. And you intended to do bodily harm? Yeah, probably. However, I knew the giant was going to make porcelain pastrami out of me. And Josephine over there stuffed me with an oven without looking. I thought I'd soon be one cooked goose. Go on with your explanation. So I hightailed it out of that castle as quick as lightning. So, again, I ask you, did you know that Joe Giant was on the beanstalk when you fled? Yeah, but I told you I was scared to death. Scrambled down the beanstalk yelling for my mom's help. She handed me the axe and I chopped down the beanstalk at just in the nick of time. The giant hit the ground with a huge kerplunk. Jack, did you take any items of value from the castle? Uh, yeah, but they were just my dad's old treasures, and I figured I was just getting back where was the family's. Wouldn't it have made more sense to just have the police recover the items for you? I guess so. No further questions, Your Honor. You may step down. Please call your next witness. The last witness to testify is Jack Corson's dear old mother, Mrs. Corson. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Mrs. Porson, did you realize that Jack was going to injure the giant when you handed him the axe? Jack said he found his dead father's missing valuables, and since we were desperate for money, we used them. My son is an honest boy, and I trust him. So you say the gold coins, the harp, and the hen that lays golden eggs were all your husband's valuables at one time? Of course they were. They were taken at one time, and we became very poor. It was most difficult for us to survive. No further questions, Your Honor. Any questions from the prosecution? None, Your Honor. Does the prosecution have a closing statement? Yes, Your Honor. It's true that Jack definitely decided to take the law into his own hands when he went on those three different occasions to the giant's castle. Even if the valuable items did belong to the family at one time, 
He could easily observe the problems of anger he was creating as he entered the home without Joe Giant's knowledge. Knowing this danger, he still proceeded instead of having the police recover his dad's valuables. After taking the gold coins, the magical hen, and the golden harp, he knew the giant was furious. He proceeded, and when he saw him on the beanstalk, he knew very well the horrible danger of chopping it down. He thought about his actions, and he decided to cause harm to Mr. Giant. In the end, Mr. Giant lost his life because of Jack's actions. I asked the jury to carefully think about Jack's deliberate actions of entering Mr. Giant's home and finally causing his death. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, there's only one verdict you could possibly deliver, and that is that Jack Porson is guilty of second-degree murder. Does the defense attorney have a closing statement? Yes, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I ask you, what kind of defense could Jack Porson possibly have against such a huge man that was known to eat people? There is no doubt that his extreme poverty and love of his mother caused him to climb the beanstalk to rightfully retrieve the items that belonged to his father. In his attempt, he feared for his life, and rightfully so. This is just a pure and simple case of self-defense, and Jack is an innocent victim. I ask the jury to find, in their good hearts, that Jack is not guilty and allow him to get back to the life he deserves. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Members of the jury, I will now instruct you on the law in this case. Remember, you are sworn to decide this case fairly. Neither sympathy nor prejudice must influence your decision. The law says that second-degree murder must include the following elements. One, the victim's death. Two, the death in our county. Three, the death that was caused by the defendant. Four, the death that can be justified. Five, the defendant intended to do great bodily harm to the victim and that death was a probable result. However, if based on what you have heard, you have a reasonable doubt that the above statements are not true, then you must decide that the defendant, Jack Porson, is not guilty. The defendant is also accused of three counts of larceny. The elements that are necessary for larceny are, one, the property that was taken had value when it was removed. Two, the property was taken without consent and it was moved from the giant's castle. And three, the defendant intended to deprive the owner of the property permanently. Again, I remind you, you must consider all elements, and if you have a reasonable doubt about any of the statements, then you must return a not guilty verdict. Has the jury reached a verdict? Yes, Your Honor. We, the jury, find the defendant not guilty of the three counts of larceny. However, we would like to express our decision about the murder charges in verse together, since we feel so strongly about our opinion. Five, six, seven, eight. Hit the jail, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the jail, Jack. Don't you come back no more. Hit the cell, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the jail, Jack. And don't you come back no more. Will the defendant please rise? The court will pass sentence after the probation department makes its report. Sister C will be one week from today. Bind is continued. All rise. Court is dismissed. This is Doris Nabisco reporting back to you with an interview of a juror's decision concerning this case. Miss, may I ask you a question concerning your decision in the Jack Porson trial? Sure, I'd be happy to. Okay. Why did you, as a juror, find Jack Porson guilty of murder but not of larceny? The prosecution proved all four necessary elements for second-degree murder. But in the larceny cases, there was one element missing, so we thought of him as not guilty. 
Thank you for your thoughts concerning this case. Now, let's return back to SCTV.